What's up YouTube, back with another video and today I'm um, going to switch topics a little bit, going to switch the gears up and uh, move from mountain bikes to automobiles. One thing about me um, that I haven't really talked about in a lot of my videos is uh, I am really into cars and trucks. I get it from my parents. They've always been into cars and trucks and so um, you'll find me catching, you, you'll find me in, in, in different vehicles uh, quite often. I am in my early 40s and um, I think this is my 27th vehicle and I know that may sound crazy you may not believe it which you know I could care less whether you do or not but uh, yeah that's just the that's just facts man I've, I've, I've uh, this is my 27th 27th car and um, I thought about it and what I'm gonna do is do a video uh, a separate video on how to buy a car uh, just the processes of me throughout the years I really started um, getting into cars you know once I became um, 21 when I really started you know my whole career of the buying process and switching out cars and things of that nature um, I've never leased a car in my life these have all been cars that I've bought and so there's a way that you can do it and I'll talk to you about that in another video but there's a process to it you know and it's not always easy and you got to have certain criteria but there is a way that you can switch out cars you know every year if you want to but you just got to know how to do it and do it right so I'll talk a little bit about that later on but in the meantime if you follow my channel and have been watching me since I've started you will always kind of notice in the background or when I do my in car or in truck videos I'm always in the Toyota 4Runner so um, when I moved to Florida from Atlanta uh, I work in education I took a huge pay cut to come down here about a thirty thousand dollar pay cut to move to Florida and a lot of people think I'm super crazy for doing that and you know it is kind of crazy to take that kind of a pay cut but at the same time um, I'm nowhere under as much stress as I was in Atlanta the, my working conditions are a lot different and you know a lot of times you got to put your health first uh, money comes and goes so I'm, I'm you know I understand money is always important but at the same time I don't put money um, in, in, in front or ahead of my life and so um, I've, I've been trying to get down to Florida for a while I've been down here for four years now and so um, because of that you know uh, I can't have the type of cars that I was driving when I lived in Atlanta when I lived in Atlanta I was driving some very expensive cars you know I had some uh, probably one of the most expensive ones was a SL 550 it was a special edition it was a um, factory matte black Mercedes-Benz SL 550 it was one of a hundred that they made uh, I think that car uh, I didn't buy it brand new, but the sticker on it was like 130,000. Um, I got it for a really good deal, and that's probably the most expensive car I had um, value-wise. And you know, that's the kind of kind of lifestyle I was more living back then. Um, when I moved to Florida, I had to get rid of it and kind of and kind of downgrade into some more um, to some cars that were definitely more affordable in my price range for the salary that I'm making down here so and honestly I'm completely okay with it I'm okay with riding a, a bucket a hoopty or riding something nice and, and, and fancy so you know I'm okay either one the cars don't make me who I am but I just love cars I love vehicles and so because of that you know you'll catch me riding in the worst of the worst and the best of the best so um, with that being said back to the forerunner uh, I got a Forerunner when I got here in Florida because I felt as though there was a lot of things I was going to need it for. I had an older SUV, a Honda Passport that I got into an accident and wrecked. And so I wanted something kind of similar to it. Um, but I wanted something, of course, a little bit better, a little bit more of an upgrade. And my choices at that time were a Toyota Forerunner, a Jeep Wrangler, a Toyota Tacoma, and um, what was the other one that I was looking at? It was one more SUV. I was looking at but I can't remember what it is now but those were my options and I went with the forerunner because I've always liked forerunners even from back in the day it was to me it was a, a mid-size SUV I, I don't want to go with the V8s anymore I've done V8s plenty enough I've had about three Yukons a Denali Yukon a regular Yukon I've had a two-door Yukon the old school ones I had um, two Chevy Avalanches the uh, first body style and the second one when they switched up the body style 
So I've had V8s and I, I don't want to go back to a V8 right now, even with gas prices low. So I want to stick with the V6s, midsize, another midsize SUV or another midsize truck. And so that's why I went with the uh, Forerunner at that time. Forerunner has been great. I have no problems with it. I bought the SR5 Premium, which comes with the synthetic leather, fake the kind of fake leather, but it looks and feels real. Um, decent sound system, um, you know, pretty much the, the next level up from the basic SR5 very good truck i have no complaints about the forerunner now with the coronavirus situation going on and the uncertainty of what's going on um i wanted to get my payments a little bit lower found a good interest rate found a good deal on the car and so i just traded in my 2016 sr5 premium forerunner for a 2017 4x4 off-road toyota tacoma and um i have no regrets about it i'm actually uh more proud to say that I actually got my payments reduced by $170 a month from what I was paying on the Forerunner. So actually, um, I got a one year newer car, I got my payments lower, and um, I got a truck that I can say has a lot of the upgrades and features that I already want on it. That's one thing that I made a mistake on with the Forerunner. And going forward, if I do decide to trade this in and get something else, I usually buy cars that are like anywhere from one to two years used. I will buy a new car if I can get a 0% interest rate on it. If not, then I stick with the one or two years. And that's the reason why is because most of the depreciation will come off that car within two to three years. So if you buy a car that's two years old, you know, it's still pr practically new with low miles and most of the depreciation is starting to come off of the car. And so um, that's what this car is. This is 2017. Um, my Forerunner had high miles on it. This one has semi high miles on it but it does come with a lot of the things that i already wanted on the truck it comes with the lift kit already installed it's four by four it comes with the uh, off-road tires it comes with a sound system except for the amp the guy who traded this truck in took the amp out so i got to get another amp in it but other than that it's, it's it's the color that i really wanted that that um sunburnt orange color they call it inferno red or inferno orange and um and yeah it's more modern inside and that's what i really like about it i love the forerunners and this is all a matter of opinion because there are other videos that compare the forerunner against the tacoma and the forerunner that i have was the fifth generation the tacoma that i have is the third generation and the thing is is it's very similar uh in a lot of ways and then they're different in a lot of ways but at the same time the the actual interior feel of the of the tacoma third generation tacoma feels a lot more modern than my SR5 Premium 4Runner. Um, it's a lot more sleek. It's not all of those big gimmicky buttons. You don't have um, all of the stuff that uh, some of those buttons, the, the actual emblems rub off or the lettering rubs off really easy on those. Um, now, that's just the interior um, part of it. I think the Tacoma definitely uh, gets, a, gets a better grade or a a plus when it comes to that compared to the forerunner when it comes to the actual driving part as far as the mechanical very very similar vehicles um the forerunner of course um is great it's it's an off-road truck it, it wasn't a four by four but still the off-road capabilities are still good on that i didn't have the off-road tires on it but i did upgrade uh to trd pro rims i upgraded to the predator uh side steps um i blacked out all the emblems um what else did I do? I put on the uh, hood deflector, um, just minor upgrades to it. But the Tacoma that I recently bought pretty much has everything already in it that I would need or want. Um, and so that's that's the biggest thing for me. Um, it's all a matter of opinion. I can't say either or which one is better than the other one. I'm not going to say anything bad about the Forerunner. Uh, I think it was a great truck as well. But right now, um, for what I do and what I need, I think the Tacoma is going to definitely last a while and uh and keep me going and so yeah i'm gonna do a walk around on the truck and so um i do a quick interior uh portion of it and as you can see this particular one does have the matching uh inferno red or inferno orange um what do you call it uh plastic uh mold in the uh interior um these right here weren't included. I actually got these from Amazon, the mat, these little plastic, I mean, these rubber mats that actually uh, um, can go into the uh, into the interiors as well. Um, got the, Tac the Tacoma Weather rubber mats. And just to show you guys how sleek it is, I'm just gonna start it real quick. 
This whole dash right here, the seven inch screen display is a lot more high end than the one that I had in the uh, in the Forerunner. And um, but it is it is pretty similar. The really cool thing about this one though is it has an eco it has an eco um, app on here that actually tells you the range of miles, the speed, all of that stuff is actually in an app. It does have a display as well that you can you can see here that goes over all of the you know your tire pressure and your and your um, speed on this on this digital display, but it also has an app that you can click on as well to give you more detailed information, which I thought was really cool. Another cool feature about this particular colorway is that they actually have the orange. And this is all factory um, stitching in the seats. These are cloth seats; they're not leather. But again, I could care less about that. The, the leather on the Forerunner, I put car covers over it anyway. So you know, leather doesn't really mean anything to me, especially when I'm sweating and coming back from mountain biking on the beach. Some sandy, like that's the last thing I want to do anyway. Is get rid of the, you know, is, is scratch up or mess up my leather. So I actually would rather have cloth seats for what I'm going to use it for. Um, let's see what else up here. You have your crawl control up here where the actual truck can actually, um, you know, do a crawl, whether it's stuck in sand or mud or whatever the case may be. Uh, I will be taking this to New Smyrna Beach and driving it on the beach or maybe even Daytona as well. So we'll check that section out at a later point in time. Another cool feature about the truck is it has its own charging station where you can actually, um, hold on for a minute, guys. Let me see if I can stop that beeping right quick. Oh, I'm just close the door. Um, where I can actually charge the uh, phone right here. And you'll see, well, you can't see it now through this, but this button right here will actually wirelessly charge my phone just by putting it on the mat, which I think is really cool. Um, another thing that the guy who previously owned the, the car, he actually installed a light bar already in it. So this came already on the truck. He also installed, looks like a base, for a, uh, a base control for a sub, which if I install the sub, that's already installed, so that's pretty cool. Um, you got your weather mats right here. I went separately, found a guy, and bought these Predator tubes for the Tacoma for only 160 bucks, man. These are like five, $600 side steps that I got for $160 on OfferUp. I'm telling you guys, you gotta, you gotta use that app. Um, orange color is sick, man. It's, it's, it's a really, really nice colorway. Yeah, you can see the lift right here. These are the Toyo um, Open Country. We got 265 um, off-road tires. Uh, you can see the lift. And I'm trying to see if you can see the actual shocks on here. I think these are the Bliston shocks, but I can't see the name. But I thought I think it's on the other side. You can see it. Um, the grill is, is sick as well. The previous owner upgraded the grill. Um, also put in the lights as well to the install there, which I think it looks really good as well for the truck. Um, you also see the uh, the black vinyl decal that he put on the hood. Um, I'm thinking about putting a AVS uh, hood reflector right here or, or a hood protector, um, but I don't know yet. I'll see how that goes. And here's another side. Let me see if I can see the actual. I don't see it on there, but. To my understanding, those are the uh, blistering shocks. So, and uh, yeah, man, this is pretty much it. This is the the new ride, uh, vehicle new ride, not bike new ride. And yeah, as you can see, the TRD 4x4 off-road logo on the back has your uh, steel, uh, I mean your stainless steel tailpipe, truck bed back here with the mat. Um, I've upgraded to the LED lights back here um, as well, and I'm going to do so in the interior. And yeah, it's got some use on it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's uh, it's not a brand new truck. Again, this is almost three years old. So, but the cool thing about it though is it just actually uh, looks good. Look, I even got a bug on here to match. Even my bugs match the truck. But anyway, yeah, man. I just want to show you guys the new ride. So if you guys see me in other videos and be like, hey, what's that that orange thing you're pushing right now? Yeah, this is the new the new baby for for right now, guys. And I probably going to hold on to this one for a while just for the things that I do um, I actually sold my uh, bike rack that I did the review on because what I'm going to do is get a tailgate mat for my mountain bikes now which I think will hold up very very well so yeah hope you guys uh, hope you guys think it's pretty cool like I do if not it's okay 
because uh, I'm really feeling this thing right now. So, so this is it, man. The Tacoma 4x4 Off-Road. The nickname is going to be the Dorito Locos Taco. So that's about it, guys. I just kind of wanted to um, show you guys the new truck. Oh, another cool feature I forgot to show you is that it definitely does have the GoPro mount already factory installed. How cool is that? And you already know I pretty much do these videos, so that's definitely going to be useful at some point in time. Um, yeah, I'm loving it, man. And and just for those people out there who are diehard Taco fans or Tacoma fans and those who are diehard 4Runner fans, listen, I understand that I, this is a touchy subject and a lot of people will swear up and down one is better than the other. But to me, you, you, you know, they're, they're very, very similar. It's all an opinion as far as which one is better. Um, or which one's more practical but for what i what i do on a normal basis in my outdoor activities i think this truck is going to come in a lot more handy than the forerunner will i know a lot of people may say well what's the difference you got the big cabin space in the forerunner you have a truck bed back here um there's a lot of differences um one in particular is i don't have to worry about a bunch of sand and dirt getting in the interior of my car you would not believe how dirty and filthy the back of my forerunner gets even when i vacuum it out it just doesn't matter and sand once it gets in your interior that stuff is hard to get out like it just gets in every crack and crevice you can imagine um not only that the dirt from mountain biking coming off the tires from hauling stuff back soil from the from home depot or you know whatever the case may be it's to me i would rather throw that stuff back in the back of a truck bed any day than inside of the cabin of a of a suv um because it's just going to get dirty on top of that the the headliner in the back of the the forerunner that i had was just extremely dirty from all of the stuff that i would pack in there and it start hitting the top of the actual headliner um scraps and scrapes and scratches all over the place so yeah it was looking bad in the back other than that i mean you know it's 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 not that big of a deal but at the same time it's a whole i don't care about the truck bed it can get scratched up that's what it's made for but the inside of your car the interior of your car you still want it to look nice and you don't want it to get scratched up and so that's really the big difference between the two this this section right here is pretty much all i need it's just almost just as roomy as what the um the forerunner was so i'm not really losing space here i'm just losing basically the enclosure of the suv compared to the truck bed of this only thing else i need to probably do is definitely get a truck bed cover eventually over time i'll probably um end up getting one of those as well so so yeah man other than that hey i'm, I'm loving the truck i'm saving some money at the same time um i did drive a little hump to go get it that's another story for another video but i will be doing a, a updated video on how to buy cars getting the best deal for your car and how to upgrade your car let's say every year to year and a half um, it is doable it is doable but I will say it is a process again and you have to have good credit and you got to take the time to do the research if you do the research and you have good credit it can happen to where you don't have to be stuck with the vehicle you just got to make sure you just play it smart and just follow everything that I'm going to talk about in that video so I'll save that for another day but other than that I hope you guys are being safe I'll check you out in the next video peace